Welcome to another episode of Ask the Zamboni Experts. Today, it's my special treat to host Phil Pritchard and Scott Weber of the Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, some of the you out there might recognize Phil as one of the lucky people that gets to keep the cup, a.k.a. the Holy Grail. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey, Doug, how's it going? Always good to be with you, Doug. Thank you very much, Phil, and thank you, Scott. We'll uh, try to um, throw some softball questions and maybe get to some tougher ones <laughs> as we get through this. Um, it's, it's, it's a great pleasure for me to be able to do this. So thank you very much. Our pleasure. Yeah. Phil, I'm going to throw the first one at you. How did you become the keeper of the cup, a.k.a., as I like to call it, the holy grail of hockey, um, or one of the keepers of the cup? Well, Doug, if my wife was here right now, she'd tell you wrong time, wrong place. But I'll tell you something totally different. <laughs> I've been I've been with the hall uh, going on 32 years now, and I was fortunate. And then my actually my first week on the job, uh, we had to take the Stanley Cup had to go up to Newmarket, Ontario, north of Toronto, for a minor hockey event, and it was a Friday afternoon. Our staff at the time was only about six or seven people, and it was, like I said, Friday night. No one wanted to do it because it was a Friday night. I said, hey, I, I'll go Friday night. It doesn't matter to me. So that was my first time out with a cup, uh, one week into my job. And it kind of, I guess loosely, we can use the word snowball from there. And it kept going and going. Things started happening. And we'd fly with a cup. And it, we just kind of made it that everywhere the cup goes, someone from the hall goes. And it it kind of became our brand type of thing. And from there, I think fans started, came up with the keeper of the cup term themselves. And it, it just went from there. So what was an innocent, I guess, mini tour back in September 88. And here we are 32 years later, still doing it. That's awesome. Did uh, you, are we able to trademark uh, the name cup keeper or keeper of the cup? You know what? It, it's it's funny you say that because uh, Keeper of the Cup, we do have trademarked and, and uh, the license to it. We have the uh, the name itself. We have the Twitter account. We have the Instagram. Uh, I think we have a Facebook account of it. We got a TikTok account of it now, too. Uh, we have Tales with the Cup, which is a slideshow with the Keeper of the Cup as well. So we have that as well. So it it kind of all, all falls under the the umbrella of the Hockey Hall of Fame, though whether it's Keeper of the Cup or, or Travels with Stanley or, or whatever, it, it all falls under the, the Hockey Hall of Fame. Well, that's great. Scott, have you ever had to uh, take the Cup to places uh, as part of your job with the Hall? I've never had the pleasure of taking the Cup somewhere. I've only um, worked with them. some of the other trophies, like the Prince of Wales and the um, Campbell Cup and other trophies like that in nature. That was a few years ago. <laughs> Scotty's well, still, he's too valuable at the hall. We need him at the hall. We can't have him on the road. That that must be why I get to go on the road quite a bit is because I'm not uh, viewed as uh, being of value. So Yeah, he, Doug, you and I are the same. <laughs> get rid of us. Get rid of us out of the office. <laughs> I, I think it's because I cause less trouble when I'm on the road than when I do when I'm <laughs> in the office. So, um, Phil, could you tell us a little bit uh, about the Hockey Hall of Fame and what you do? Uh, in addition to dealing with the cup, uh, as well as if you've got a favorite exhibit in the hall other than um, Lord Stanley. Sure. Uh, like I said earlier, I've been with the hall for going on 32 years now and seen it grow into, I could be a bit biased here, but one of the best sports museums and hall of fame in the world now. That, And we've been at uh, Young and Front Street since 1993, so... 27 years now we've been there. But I, I think what is special about it and what kind of ties in my role in it as uh, the vice president and the resource center and curator is, is the passion that not only myself or Scott, but I think all our, all our employees have for the Hockey Hall of Fame, the artifacts, the displays. And we use this term, actually one of our old CEO, Scotty Morrison, always used it. He calls it the three E's. And we always call it, education, excellence, and entertainment. And what we try and do with every display we do, and, and Scott can further it on the displays, 
is make sure all three of those are falling into place. So when the guest experience comes through, they see an excellent display, they get educated about the game, but it's also entertaining in that. And I think just from, from that itself, it kind of tells you a bit about what a curatorial position is as, as we're preserving hockey history. And as we all know, hockey history is happening every day. So in, in saying that, we have a, an abundance of artifacts, not only at the hall, but of our archives and through our staff, uh, preserving them and conserving them, but most importantly, sharing them with the, uh, the public and the guest experience. That's great. Scott, can you uh, fill us in on what some of your job duties are and uh, what you might have as far as a preference goes or your favorite uh, exhibit within the hall? So, um, Doug, yeah, so my role there at the hall is, is as Phil said, it's more really directly inside the museum, um, working with um, other members of the Kira Chill team. Phil, obviously, uh, some other guys, Craig Campbell and Isaac Westgate, we work with a lot. And we bring together um, what um, different content we have. And I guess my role then specifically is to try and package it together and see how we're going to best put that out there for how it's going to tell the story. Um, and then the design features of how we're going to, what imagery we're going to use to tell that story with and so forth. And yeah, so really focusing on the story element and trying to bring out that personal connection that Phil was getting at. We want to we want to educate. We also do. We want to make it interesting and fun. That's what makes it an exhibition. So we entertain there as well with that too, and hopefully um, enrich a person's experience when they're going past just these physical artifacts and trying to give them real context and how they might even relate to them or family or friends. Um, so I guess with that, it kind of leads into what my personal favorite exhibition there in the past has been some variation of the Memorial Cup whether it's when it's, there's been a, whether we looked at it from the history of World War One or what we're currently looking at it in the history of war, the 75th anniversary of the um, World War One and it's a World War Two ending. Unfortunately, not many people can see that because it, we are closed right now. But um, so yeah, I really enjoyed looking at that, uh, the war history tied in with um, different levels of hockey, whether it would have been the NHL or junior hockey specifically with the Memorial Cup and other leagues as well too. Well, that's great. You, you guys both have dream jobs for um, someone who grew up in Minnesota. Uh, I was around hockey uh, quite a bit as a youngster. Uh, my dad worked for the North Stars and um, I've been up to Eveleth to see the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame, which is nothing in comparison to what uh, you have. The only thing that I truly enjoy up there is that I get to watch the 1980 Olympic team uh, beat the Russians on a regular basis. So um, <laughs> that's Big enjoyable. Moment. <laughs> it is. You know, we have to take the two that we have, unlike Canada and Russia, uh, with all the gold medals that they have. But that, that's awesome. Phil, did you have anything else that you wanted to add to that? Well, I, I think what you said about dream do jobs, Doug, I mean, I think anyone who loves what they do gets gets up in the morning, goes to their work, they have a dream job. And probably all three of us are in that position. We, we all enjoy what we do at all in different ways, probably. But I, I think in, in saying that, as you talked about uh, Eveleth and that, I mean, their Hall of Fame is, it's, it's very well done. Uh, for those that haven't been up to Eveleth, it's a long way up, but it's, it's well worth it in that. And we work closely with them because again, they're, they're preserving hockey history in the US and we're preserving hockey history around the world. So there's, there's always hockey history going on, but at the end of it all, it's the displays that tell the story and how, how Scott said about the Memorial Cup or the, the uh, hockey goes to war displays and that. Uh, to me, I, I love our Stanley Cup ring display of uh, all the different rings over the years that we've got. And I, each display tells a story and I, I think that's what makes it special. Well, I, I think you guys know well uh, that hockey fans are probably the most passionate I honestly believe, and they can take all the other trophies, the Stanley Cup to me is the uh, best trophy that's given out in professional sport. And I also believe that it's the hardest trophy to win uh, if you just take a look at the numbers and things uh, with it. So, um, Phil, you do quite a bit of travel. Um, I know, uh, you know, to a small degree, uh, I travel quite a bit, but uh, not near as much as what you have to. Um, have uh, you touched all the continents as yet? 
And is there any place um, that you have been to uh, there that you have not been to that you might want to get to? Well, it, you know, it, it's funny you ask that, Doug. I mean, we have not, with the Stanley Cup, we have not been below the equator yet, which is pretty peculiar when there's 80 countries around the world playing hockey. So all of this has happened north of the equator. Uh, I have been to five of the continents, uh, not with a cup. I mean, some of them I've been to for hockey and that. Uh, in Africa, I, I, we haven't taken the cup there, but I have been there for a hockey tournament and that to uh, to promote the game and that too. We have not been to Antarctica. We have not been to uh, Australia and down that way either. But I, I think what's uh, amazing about wherever we go to is they, the different cultures, the the people, their their history, their food, and and that makes it so special because we we're, we're all bonded by this great game of hockey. But no matter where you go they offer something different, whether it's a, a different country, a different city. It could be a northern city in Canada. It could be a place over in Slovakia or Slovenia or Czech Republic. I, I think each one of those are, are unique, but they have the same love that we do for this great game. That, that's awesome. I've been lucky when I was a little kid, went to Africa. My dad got sent over there uh, to teach refrigeration. So I've been over there and I wouldn't mind seeing that. And I was really hoping that uh, this year was going to be a year to get to South America. I sold a couple machines to Argentina and yeah. uh, was hoping to get uh, way down there to the, the tip to where I might be able to see uh, other landscapes down there. Scott, how about you? Uh, do you have uh, a lot of travels in your history book or uh, not much as yet? Um, number of travels from personal interest and as a big museum goer, like trying to hit off as many museums as I had been throughout much much of Europe and stuff. Um, one that I thought was the most fascinating so far that I've was been to is the um, Lausanne in Lausanne, Switzerland, the Olympic Museum. There, we'd actually years ago borrowed on loan the Olympic medals from all the games back at the hall. We did that exhibit. Um, I think it was back in 2008, if, it, if, it, if I remember correctly. So it was neat going there and seeing how they how they did the exhibition. So yeah, most of my travel has been more on a curatorial perspective of just um, getting some experience and learning and see what other people are doing. Um, but also too now starting to get more involved with traveling just to see artifacts before we get them on a loan as we currently have for, um, I met with Gordy House sons, Marty and Mark uh, at Marty's house um, a little over a year ago. And that was a, that was a wonderful experience. Really, really friendly guys. and. It was just neat going through their basement um, at Marty's house and picking out different artifacts that we knew that would be the best to tell the story of Gordie Howe in, in, in position and comparison to Wayne Gretzky for our 9 to 99 exhibition. Um, so yeah, that was an awesome experience and um, just really friendly, great people to be around and kind of a childhood dream to sit there and be actually talking to these guys and hanging out with them at their place. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I was lucky enough to meet both of those uh, gentleman a couple of years ago, as well as Gordy Howell before he passed away. And um, one of the highlights of my life, you talked about uh, um, medals. I got to hold a 56 silver medal and a 60 gold medal from Dick Rodenheiser, who used to run an ice rink out in the Boston area. And oh, wow. it was, it was incredible. That's, that's a photo that I have that uh, is something I treasure and uh, thank him. He was, he was handing them around to let people see him. Like it was nobody's, big deal but uh it truly was an experience and a half to to have that i, so. I think that's amazing about olympians they always share their olympic medals and they are so spectacular no matter which olympics they're from but olympians after they've won the medal they they know that it's a team that won it so they share with everybody and it's they seem to have no problem passing it around doug like you said it, it's great stuff um one question uh, for both you guys. Do either of you play hockey? Uh, Bill, you're probably on my vintage, so maybe the, the <laughs> hockey isn't something that's still part of your repertoire. But, uh, Scott, uh, you play it, or um, either of you have kids that might be coming up playing hockey? Go well, ahead, I, Scotty. You can start. Yeah, yeah. I'll be honest. It's been a few years since I played. Um, I, I'm planning to get back into it. Um. I have a couple of young kids. Um, one's um, four. His name's Colin. The other one's Ryan. At a year, just over a year. So, Colin and I were playing road hockey yesterday. So I'm 
I'm glad he's starting to see interest in it. Um, so hoping to get him started next year. Um, and hopefully that gets me back into it. it. I played for many years, but, um, that was my first dream was to be a hockey player. That didn't quite work out. I'm really small and, um, not that good. So <laughs> I had to find other things that could, that could work for hockey, but yeah, I can't wait to get back and do it. And it's uh, cause playing is still such a, it's, it's one of the best things. So. I, I think what's cool, Doug, is every now and then the Hall of Fame, we have a team that we put together, whether it's just for an exhibition game or a tournament or something that way. So we try and get everyone to play. I, I still play in an old-timers league in Burlington. Uh, not the best, not the worst. I'm just, I'm just, I'm a good teammate in the dressing room, I think. There you go. You're bringing the, make sure the beer's cold. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, always. Yes. Oh, that a boy. That's I, the fun of. I had to stop uh, playing because my uh, brain was telling my body what to do, and my body was uh, telling my brain what it could do with uh, <laughs> wanting to make it go through those things again. It's something I do miss, and I wish I was in a little bit better shape. But I'm glad to see that you guys have a connection to it, and it's awesome, Scott, that you've got kids coming up. It's I think it's the greatest sport that there is in the world. Um, I'm so, looking forward to I, that part of it, sir. Either one of you guys, and uh, we'll let uh, Scott, you go first. Uh, who's a favorite hockey player that you have, and have you had the opportunity to meet them with your job? Well, um, I haven't had a really a favorite player in the last few years. Um, a lot of players, like, but growing up, my favorite player was Patrick Waugh, um, and I was who I always tried to emulate when I was on the driveway and stuff as Patrick Waugh making a glove save or something like that. Um, just couldn't get enough of watching him at the time. Um, and I have met him um, when um, I was early on doing some exhibitions at the hall and I had just finished the Patrick Wall exhibition for his new induct for his induction. And um, I happened to be standing nearby and one of the persons who was chaperoning him, was showing him the exhibit and he said, well, this guy here, Scott made it. So he brought me over and he had some nice things to say about it. So I was pretty pleased with that and um, we moved on. That's awesome. Bill, what about you? Well, I, I'm like Scott. I'm a, I'm a Montreal Canadian fan too, long time one. So anytime through my uh, course with the hall that I got a, to meet some of the Montreal Canadian legends, it was pretty special. I, I got to uh, take Rocket Richard for a tour through the hall years ago, which was very unique. Uh, I actually had dinner with Jean Beliveau years ago as well in Montreal at his favorite restaurant and that. So they are, they are two highlights, obviously, both before my time, but both legends and both Hockey Hall of Fame members. Uh, growing up, I was a, a 70s Montreal Canadiens fan. A lot of those guys are in the hall now and that. And, it, I mean, to me, each time you meet them, you, you realize how great hockey people are, as, as Doug, as you all know. They're, they're so special and, and so down to earth. And especially the guys that are honored members. I mean, they're, they're class of the class. And both Scott and I get to be basically up close and personal with them when they're doing induction weekend, whether it's displays or what they happen to do, fan forms and that. So you get to see a different side of them as well. And I think that's always special too. Yeah, it, it's always neat to be around hockey players. As a kid, I got to be around many uh, because of my dad's job and have stayed in touch with a few of them. Tom Reed, who play, wasn't a great player, but scored a goal that I'll never forget. It was against Kenny Dryden on a penalty shot when he didn't want to take it and uh, ended up earning the North Stars a, a point and a tie back in the day when they only had that. And getting to watch guys on the Canadians like Lafleur and uh, Cornwallier and the Mahovlich brothers and Kenny Dryden and then seeing Gump Worsley as a North Star uh, at the end of his career after many years with the, the Montreal Canadiens. A, a lot of fun for me. Um, so it, it's great to hear you guys have similar stories to it as well. So um, one thing I'm going to throw at you, Phil, I guess uh, the story is that uh, you and our VP of sales and brand management, Greg Dean, uh, went to school together. Uh, yeah. Any interesting stories that you can share that we can use to hold over his head? You know what? You know what's funny, Doug, is Greg and I grew up probably, I don't know, 500 yards from one another. Like it's really close where my family and and his family grew up in that. We went to the same public school all the way through middle school into high school. So we're talking 50, 50 plus years now that I've, I've known Greg and his family. 
and it, it's crazy when a few years ago, uh, I think we were at an all-star game and, and we went to meet Paula and Greg was there and I thought, holy smokes. I mean, he looks the exact same still. And I hope he says the same about me is <laughs> it was a long time ago that in, in high school and that, and it, it just goes to show you how life is a full circle and we, uh, Hey, we're all we're all doing something we love, and it's pretty special to to share that bond. It, it, it's funny when you run across somebody in a world that you didn't expect to see them in when you grew up with them uh, doing different things. And I've had a few experiences of those myself. Um, yeah, I mean, well, between us, I mean, a few weeks ago, Scotty, myself, and Greg were pushing the Zamboni out of our uh, out of our offsite archive. So hey, <laughs> that really ties everybody in there. It does. And, uh, yeah, and it, fortunately we got it out because if you look at us, we're not three muscle guys here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you could give Arnold Schwarzenegger a run for his money. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe Arnold Ziffel, but that's a different show. <laughs> Scott, have you ever been able to drive one of our machines? I have never had the privilege. I have, to be frank, I have no idea. I'd be scared to even know where to start, but I've always loved watching them. As a kid, I was fascinated as could be. Well, if I can drive a machine, I prove that just about anybody can. So I, I think you're going to be in that 95% range, and maybe we get you over to Brantford and get you on a machine. How about you, Phil? Have uh, you had the pleasure of uh, driving it, whether in a parade or on ice? I, I haven't. I uh, I have sat in them before. Uh, when we got the Boston Zamboni and we brought it into the hall, I was standing on it. There was someone else who was sitting on it. Uh, but, but like Scott has said from, from a kid, I mean, to me, Zamboni is hockey. Like everybody relates to the Zamboni. It, it's one of those mesmerizing things between periods or at the end of the game that the Zamboni just goes round and round and everyone just watches it. It's it, what's makes hockey what it is. Uh, obviously we've had the opportunity to go to Brantford and to, uh, Southern California to the, uh, the manufacturers there and had the tour and that and it's amazing what you have there to me uh i love the uh behind the scenes in brantford in the uh the cemetery in the back of all the old zambonis and that and i i guess that's the historian is we like to see those ones sure um either of you two have a favorite memory uh that's tied to zamboni i know um, we were lucky in 2000 uh 2002 i think it was salt lake um the all-star game was down here in la and uh i've got a, a story or two with regards to uh the parade and driving a machine and having a guy run a red light uh that i almost i should have hit him with the, the machine but i i didn't want to damage the machine but do you have any favorite memories that tie into a zamboni uh with um with your product or with the the hall Go ahead, Phil. I, I, yeah, I'll start on that. I've, I've got three great memories, actually being fortunate to be in the Stanley Cup parades. Some of the teams actually bring the Zambonis onto the float and, and make it part of the parade. And I think that's always so special because, as we said, fans love that. Uh, again, I remember when we got the Boston Zamboni and they delivered it uh, from Boston to the Hockey Hall of Fame and Sports Illustrated was there watching it come in and that it, it was big news in Toronto and and for everybody around. But finally, uh, I've been a, a postage stamp collector for years and I was thrilled and in and, and, and talking with Paul in your office and everybody when the Zamboni postage stamp came out and they had the release of it and that of, uh, of all the teams with the, the Zambonis on the stamp and that. And to me, that tied in all my my hobbies all in one right there. So for me, um, I haven't had the chance to had a, to go in any big parades like the NHL related with a Zamboni, but mo mine are still, I think um, they're, they're personal, but obviously still really cool. And they kind of attach to why people get excited about Zamboni still, I think. And my first one would have been actually, um, I grew up in a small town called Cayuga. It's actually where um, Marty McSorley and, Ray Emery are from um, and there was we used to have um, a, one of the tractor Zamboni so the Zamboni attachment that would go on the back of a tractor and that's what did the ice there and um, we had that was obviously in the arena but that was in a, um, a few parades in our small town of 
2,000 people. Um, so I always thought that was a neat thing. Um, going to the, the plant in Brantford, that was really cool. I know that I've shared that story with a few of my friends. Um, and they were all pretty envious of that little experience because, and several of my friends and family live in Brantford. That's where my family, um, that's where my dad grew up and stuff. My family's there. And I know a lot of them wish they had that chance. And um, the last one actually is, goes back to my son, my older son, Colin. Um, ever since he's actually seen what a Zamboni is, he finds it utterly fascinating. He likes to talk about it. He likes to get his little Zamboni toy out and play it. And he asks me questions about it. And I answer what little few I actually can based on my somewhat knowledge of the machine. Um, and he loves his little Pez um, Zamboni. So yeah, it's, I always do enjoy that part with talking to him, my boy Colin about the Zamboni. That's awesome. We, we like to think we're almost as famous as that guy that came out of, of Brantford. I'm trying to remember his name. Keith Gretzky, right? That's the yeah, guy yeah. that, uh, yeah. yeah. He, did, so. he did come from Brantford, yeah. <laughs> but I think yeah. his brother might have a little bit on uh, him. We're, we're almost, uh, almost as famous as that gentleman. Uh, <laughs> I, I've got a question here or a story that I was told uh, to ask about here. Um, Mike Bolt, uh, who I know has driven a machine, so he's one up on you, Phil, with yeah. that regard. Well, we're going to have to get you on there. Uh, talks about uh, flags flying, NHL flags flying on people's porches. And as you drive around the neighborhood with uh, the cup, you will just stop by and, and give people the treat of a lifetime. I know for me, when I got to touch the cup for the first time, it was unbelievable. So maybe you can expound on that a little bit. Yeah, and actually, I've, as we're talking about Mike, I, I remember when he did drive on the Zamboni, he was, uh, I, I was, must have been in the top two or three that he phoned to tell me about it because like like both Scott and I saying that the, the Zamboni is such a big part of hockey and it's a thrill for everybody. So he had phoned me about that. But regards to the cup and, and driving it around at, uh, with guys on Stanley Cup days, it they are a lot of fun because there's, the expect the unexpected and you never know where we're going to show up or where we're going to stop. And we've, we've done some great ones over the years. We've, we've been driving down the street lost and someone needed to go to the bathroom. So you stop at a house and just knock on the door and ask if you can borrow the bathroom and you're standing there with the Stanley cup. And it, it's just, it's an amazing story to be part of. And you actually do get to borrow their bathroom as well, but it, it costs you a bunch of photos and that too. But it, it's really neat, especially in the in the little towns of that when the Stanley Cup comes to town. It, it's a big it's a big deal for everybody, and 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 so it should be. I uh, I I think the Stanley Cup, like you said earlier, Doug, is one of the greatest trophies in in sport. And and for us to work at the Hockey Hall of Fame and and have it there, it's it's a big part of hockey. Just like Zamboni is just a big part of hockey as well. Well, you you guys are like uh, true Make a Wish on Wheels when you're doing things like that and it's it's awesome uh again especially if you connect with hockey fans for them to get that opportunity to get close to that i i know for me uh and it's a story goes back to vancouver where richard zamboni took pictures and then he lost the role of film and he had to tell me that he had lost the the pictures and he was almost in tears i'm going Richard, it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Well, I'm trying to bite my tongue going, oh my God. And then he ended up finding the, the role of film in his briefcase a, a few weeks later and got the pictures developed for me. But th that's, that's awesome. Uh, one other story, if you could maybe expound upon, Phil, is about um, there was a, a blind man and his son was the commentator for his dad while they're at hockey games. And yeah. uh, you surprised him with the private visit. That had to be pretty heartwarming. Yeah, it, it's so special because for for people that obviously can see the cup, it's it's 36 inch high, it's silver, it's got a lifetime of memories on it. All of these names are engraved in it. But someone who's visually impaired to to be able to touch it and you describe to them what what it is they're touching and they've got an imagination and a visualize in their head what it is, but to see their their emotions come out when they're touching it for the first time. It, it, it's pretty special. And, and we, we go right back to the beginning about hockey there. Hockey is, is such a personable sport, I think. And all of these memories we create, whether it's with the cup or whether it's visiting the hall of fame or whether it's the Zambi Zamboni going around, around the ice between periods, they're, they're all great memories for, for hockey fans. 
to be part of and and I'm thrilled and honored to be to be right in there with them. That's awesome. Uh, our producer Ben wants to know uh, how many times you've sipped beer or some other beverage out of that. Maybe Scott, <laughs> if you've had the chance to do it as well. I have not. Um, I don't know if uh, I don't know if I'd even feel right to be honest. So yeah, it's it'd be a tough thing. <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 I <laughs> totally agree with you, Scott. It's reserved for those that have won it. I unfortunately have to tell you, I have tried it before. I was in <laughs> Russia in 1997, and it was the first time the Stanley Cup was in uh, in Russia. I was there with the Detroit Red Wings, uh, Igor Larionov and Slava Kozlov and uh, Slava Fedosov. They had the Russian five then. And we're at this big ceremony in that, and they were all toasting, and they were drinking vodka out of the Stanley Cup. And, both Igor and Slava Fedosov came up to me and and said we'd uh, we'd like you to drink out of it. And I kind of explained you don't you don't do that. You got to win the cup. And and they said this is important culture for us. It's the first time the cup's been to Russia. They did a good selling job. Uh, <laughs> and then they said Slava Fedosov said, well, if, if you don't drink it, Phil, you don't go home. That's it's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. I did. I did have a drink of vodka out of it, and uh, for those that have experienced Russian vodka, it's it's quite the drink. To have it out of the cup is pretty special. But I'm just like Scott. I, I, I don't think it's right. I, I think you have to earn that, and uh, it's reserved for the winners. That's awesome. Well, we're approaching the end of our time, but I want to go into like a, a fire round here, and I've got a few questions that uh, that I came up with, and um, I'll try to make them short. Uh, for you so that we don't keep you too long because we greatly appreciate your time. What is the strangest place that uh, you've ever had to take the cup to? Uh, for me, I'm going to say I've been uh, the second most northern city in the world in the Arctic Circle. I think it was it was very strange, but it was very special and very surreal and very cold. Uh, but I've also taken it to Lake Bled in Slovenia, which was so unique and and so special as well to me, no matter when it's the first time you get to take it somewhere unique, it, it's pretty special. Cool. And Scott, have you had the app, you, you don't travel much with it. So uh, is there <laughs> any place or person that, uh, um, that uh, you've taken the cup or been with the cup to? Um, the most unique place would be the storage unit in my office at some points. <laughs> But that's okay. pretty special, Doug. If you get a chance to go in his storage, you'll you'll love it. <laughs> awesome. Um, any unique experience with a player that uh, is shareable, and you don't have to name the player. Is this cup related, or is this anything? Cup, 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 or non-cup related? Uh, yeah, cup related. Uh, I I'm just going to use a a recent one. Uh, last year when the St. Louis Blues won the cup, their uh, their coach, Craig Ruby, he uh, First Nations out of uh, northern Alberta. And he had the cup for two days. Your coach, you get it for two days. The first day was was on his uh, reservation up in northern Alberta. The second one was outside of Philadelphia, where he lives permanently now. And when we showed up on his second day, he uh, came up to me and he put his arm around me and he goes, are you ready for day two? And I said, yep. Yeah. He goes, you like music? I said, yep. He goes, you like beer? I said, yep. He goes, we're going to have a great day. <laughs> and, that, that, but awesome. and it brings it all back to uh, no matter what they are, they, they love being in their home, they're in their home base and just being themselves. And it, it's always special to, to meet him in that way. That, that is awesome. Scott, how about you? Well, I just think I have to be with the whole thing. Just... As I said earlier, with um, Mark and Marty there, just that was utterly surreal. Um, they're just asking questions about my life too, things with my family and friends and things that I enjoy doing. It was just, it was just really down to earth and just like talking to talking to your buddy. And that's just generally what most of my experiences actually have been with other players and stuff too. It's just very friendly, down to earth people. And yeah, that was the one that I think still sticks out for me. What I've been told all my life about hockey players is because they generally are coming from smaller towns uh, in the U.S. or in Canada. They're coming from Prairie. They see, and this is not to put any other sports down, but it seems to me that 
Um, they are more humble and know what it's like to be a regular guy uh, than or gal than uh, maybe some of the other sports do. And uh, it, it's just, it's, I, I've been blessed. I, I love what I do. I've been lucky enough to be around the sport that I love for almost all my life. Certainly not to the level that you guys get to see things, but um, I've been blessed to meet um, you gentlemen and it, it's great. And with the last question I'm going to fire at you, because I, again, I, I could talk with you guys for all day, but uh, Phil, you might be freezing in the rain up there. <laughs> um, what is, it's going to be a, a four prong question here. Favorite place to eat, preferred airline, preferred hotel brand, and what is your favorite NHL building uh, past or present? All right. Do you want me to start? <laughs> sure. Uh, fire away. Star Alliance Air Canada. Uh, Marriott Brands, usually the Spring Hill Suites. Favorite place to eat. I love Mexican food. And I forgot the last one. <laughs> Was that it? Is that NHL all? Bu- NHL building. Oh, yeah. Pastor NHL building. Uh, two of them, if I can narrow it down. I love Tampa sure. because they've got the outside area in that where they have the big screen and you can watch it out there. But it's really hard to beat Montreal. It's got the heritage. It's got the history. And it's got the best hot dogs I've ever had. Have you been to Pink's in Hollywood? I have. Yes, I have. There you go. Yeah, that, that's a good that, one, too. But it's not a steamed hot dog like in Montreal. There you go. And how about you, Scott? Well, Air Canada seems to be the one. I haven't done a lot of them. So we'll do that, that one as my limited travel. Um, generally, I ended up I ended up more at Airbnb. So I like that. Um, Number I three, yeah, I'm, a, great. I'm sorry, I think that's a younger, younger crowd, yeah. uh, <laughs> the Air, Airbnb guy. So uh, that, that and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. But with Doug, that we go, all. we go for the points, though, Doug. That's why. Yeah. It, it's all about the points. I, I've <laughs> achieved lifetime diamond status with Hilton, so yeah, I'm, a, you go. I'm a Hampton Inn kind of guy. All right. So I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Scott. Did you need <laughs> no, no. help with the last two questions? No, no, I, um, I love Mediterranean food the best and um, best place. Um, I went to the I went to the Montreal Forum as a kid, so that was an amazing experience. Um, but out of the most like unique and impressive things, I think was when we did um, some work for at Rogers um, Rogers um, place there or Rogers Arena, I think is what it's called um, there at Edmonton and. Okay. Um, massive massive building just very grandiose and it was just gorgeous and really cool to do some work there for for them with the hall sure that that's the new building as opposed to the old coliseum where the all the cups were won correct that's that's correct yeah yeah I, I'm, when I'm I was lucky... there, go ahead i'm sorry yeah when we were out when i was out there we got to go to the what will be the northlands coliseum but it was okay. to see a pearl jam concert so a little bit different but <laughs> Is that a singing group? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they occasionally play some instruments. There you go. I, I've been lucky. I uh, am partial to the old Met Center where my dad was the chief engineer. I uh, spent a lot of time watching a lot of hockey in there. I was lucky enough to see a game at the old Maple Leaf Garden. Uh, I wasn't fortunate enough to see a game at the uh, old Montreal Forum, although I did get to see several uh, North Star games on TV as a kid. And I got to see a Stanley Cup final game uh, down in Chicago at the old Chicago Stadium, which if you ever got to hear the national anthem, the U.S. national anthem played there uh, and it didn't make the hair stand up in the back of your neck, uh, you're missing out on something. So, yeah, it's ge- pretty special. <laughs> yeah. Th- gentlemen, thank you very much. This was awesome. It was a very much a treat for me to get to spend time with you, even though uh, we're not in the same room. But... Uh, I get to see you through the magic of technology, get to listen to you and your stories. We want to thank you very much for participating in this uh, and look forward to when we can do this again another day. Hey, let, hey, hopefully next time, Doug, we can do it in person around a Zamboni or at the hall or maybe both. Or around a beer, maybe. Yeah, well, that's good, too. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, we're wrapping up another episode of Ask the Zamboni Experts, and I want to thank Phil Pritchard and Scott Weber uh, of the Hall of Fame for coming on with us today and sharing some great stories. We hope that everybody enjoys this and look forward to the next one 
uh, of our podcast. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, Phil. I greatly appreciate it. It's awesome. Hey, anytime, guys.